Hey everybody, it's Billy from Spicy Ginger Soap, and I'm doing something a little different today. I am trying to make myself a wooden soap mold. As you can see, I've got my um, cut pieces here already, and basically what I did was I um, did a lot of research, read a lot, looked online a lot, um, and then I went to Lowe's. I bought myself a drill driver, which I did not own, never did before. I've never used one before, so this will be interesting. Bought myself a little kit with the uh, drill bits. And um, I got the wrong screws, so I'm going to have to go back for those tomorrow. But I'm going to go ahead and drill the, the um, pre I don't know what they call them, but you basically pre-drill holes in the wood so your wood doesn't crack when you put the screws in. So I'm going to do that. I've already like marked where I want them. Um, and then they correspond obviously with um, my base. And so my, my mold is going to look going to be a three and a half um, by like 10 inch and um, I am going to make it so that it can be adjustable I think although I really don't feel like I, I'm going to need this one to be adjustable I don't think I would I'm going to make anything smaller than that in this one so I may not do that anyways this is what it's going to look like when it's done basically and I am going to use a um, hex, a hex bolt. I think it's called a hex bolt or a hex something. I'm going to use these so that um, this part will come off, and I can just slow, slide my soap out. I may only do it on one end and have this one be stationary. I'm not sure yet. But anyways, that is the plan. I've already sanded my wood down. This is poplar, and this is not cheap wood. This is expensive wood. I basically got um, enough wood for two molds, and then I have an extra piece here that's a little bit bigger than the base piece. This is a 5x5 five by, five by about probably 20 inches, something like that and uh, three quarters of an inch thick. So um, this is what it looked like before. It's a little bit rough on the edges. And you can see like rough edges right here. I sanded all my, all these pieces down real nice and smooth. And um, all of this cost me just the wood, the bolts, which I got. I actually got enough for um, both the molds. I got washers, the bolts, and then the nuts. And then I got the wood and the screws, which I told you I got the wrong size. I got one inch and I need two inch. That all was $37. And that's not including, I spent about $50 to get the drill and the bits. So this is not cheap. Um, basically just my materials cost me almost $40. And that'll make two molds, like I said. And I was going to try to do, um, I was going to get the 12 foot board and uh, 8 foot board. And I wanted them to cut it, but they couldn't do it the way I wanted it done. He could only cut them just like this. He couldn't. He couldn't cut horizontally to make like the five by five, the five and a half inch wide. He couldn't make it like five inches or four and a half. He couldn't do that for me. But he did cut this other wood for me. So, you know, I don't have a saw. I don't have ex any experience cutting wood. So I may do that in the future. But for somebody cutting all the wood for me, that was pretty cool. Um, 
basically all I have to do is put it together. So anyways, I, I'm just battling on. Let's go ahead and do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the holes. And like I said, I have not done this before, so I really honestly don't know how this is going to go. Just, I just, my main concern is making sure that it doesn't move, basically. And that's what I'm the most concerned about. Because I'm not that strong. Oh, it's actually pretty easy. Now, the only one thing I didn't think about is how deep I need to go, actually. So that's, don't, don't forget that like me. You need to, you're not going to want to just drill, you know, indefinitely down in. Although, I guess for a two inch screw, I, actually, I feel like, Okay, so it's going to go through here, which is three quarters of an inch, and then, so I feel like like right to about there is about probably good. So I'm just going to mark it like that, so let's see. There we go. Okay. Yeah, you guys, this is actually... I would not say this is difficult. I would say this is actually fairly easy. It does all the work for you, that's for sure. Obviously, these need to match up. Wow, yeah, this is... Uh-oh, my thing came off. Okay. I don't know if you guys know how to do this or not, but... Basically, my thing got loose. I don't know if I didn't tighten it enough or what the heck's going on, but... Oh, shoot. Holy moly. Okay. See, this is the kind of stuff that happens, like, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Shoot. Alright, what I'm going to do is... So I obviously didn't have it enough. Okay, let's see. I've got it now. Shoot. Okay. What the heck? Okay. 
I don't know why that happened, but All right. I'm going to take this thing off too. I don't know if that's making it worse. Okay. Sorry guys. I mean, you know, that's, I'm just showing you how things go. I, I'm just being like straight up with you guys. Like never done this before. And you know, trial and error, right? Oh yeah, my thing's not on right. Let's fix this real quick. That's why it's all wonky. There we go. That's that's better. So as you can see, I'm basically just going to do that and make the little holes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand all this down also. And um, and then when I come, when I do the next step, when I drill everything, I, when I um, put the screws in everything, I'll bring you guys back. I'm going to put the holes in every single one of these, every single one of these. And I'll bring you back for the next step, okay? Hey everybody, it's Billy from Spicy Ginger Soap. I'm back. I've done a few things in the meantime, got the screws that I needed, etc. I also, when I went to Lowe's to pick up those screws and return the wrong ones, I picked up this PVC pipe. I know you guys already probably know all about it and everything, and you've probably seen it in other videos, but I just thought I'd share real quickly. So I bought um, this, I bought two of the half inch, two foot length um, pieces and I brought, bought the end caps for them also. Um, and I'm going to, I'm not going to attach them permanently. I'm just going to leave them like that when I make the soap. And then, and you don't even have to do that. You can um, just um, put like saran wrap and tape and whatnot around it, which I am going to put some saran wrap, then put the cap on just to for extra insurance there. And I'll line this with um, freezer paper. So these were like a dollar something each, somewhere around there. And then the little caps, like these were, I think they were like 30 or 50 cents. Um, so I bought two of the half inch, one of the three quarter inch, which was, like I said, like a dollar something or two dollars. And this was like 50 cents. And then I got, uh, this is a one and a half inch, I think. No, it's just a one inch, I'm sorry. This is the one inch, and the cap was like a dollar or 75 cents. And this was like around two dollars. So basically, these were maybe like, Less than $10, I think, or around $10 for all of these. Um, and they do have others, you know, and they will cut the PVC piping for you at Lowe's also. Um, he said that he they do it for free as long as it's not like a really huge order and you're not asking for like many, many little cuts. So if you wanted to buy a, which I almost just bought like the, I think it's like 8 foot or 10 foot. They have, other, they have different sizes, but you could have them cut that up. Um, but I just did this because I thought, at first I thought I had to get the long one. And what I was going to do is just have them cut it in like two, two foot increments or even one foot increments. And then maybe just like um, sell the other ones on my Etsy site to, to people who are also soaping. 
but um, because they had the two foot long ones, I just bought them. That was before I knew that they had them already cut. So that's that. I'm going to use these definitely soon for embeds in my soap. And I also probably at a later time will get the three inch one just to do actual soap, um, a log of round soap. Um, but I didn't get that because I don't plan on doing that anytime real soon. But, and I, I had so much stuff I just, I didn't want to get too into it because that was like a side, side venture there. So while you are gone, I put my holes into um, my pre-drill holes for before I screw everything in and then I, I um, did the holes in here. Now, I had some cracking, which I was so sad when that happened. It splintered when I was drilling it. And to ensure that that doesn't happen, what I would suggest is um, building your way up. When you're making the holes, so what I did to try to keep that from happening, I did the small one, then I did this one, and then I did this one, and then this one. And it takes longer, but I think it's worth it to make sure that you don't splinter your wood up and, and wreck it. So I just went from small on up, made the small holes. Now, that being said, one of my sides, it's this one, I had to make this bigger because my holes were not lining up. So make sure you're extremely accurate when you place your holes and then when you do the coinciding holes because now I've got a block that if I do put it on, it's a little off kilter and it's not completely square. So what I'm gonna do is I'm taking this piece that doesn't fit right, I'm getting rid of it, and I'm gonna use one of my other pieces that was for the second mold. And what I'll do is I'll use this one for my other one and um, I'm gonna make a new one, but this time I have to be extremely accurate so I don't mess it up again. And what I also realized, and you know, the, these are, you can really tailor these to however you want to um, do them. But what I would suggest is doing one side stationary and then one, other, the other side that can um, come apart. And like I said, that's up to you. But what I find is you probably don't need both sides to um, be detachable probably only need one side. So on my second one, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make this, the one side stationary and the other side um, that comes apart. I'm gonna show you guys re just real quick how this works. So there we go. And I'm using washers so I don't mess up the wood. You don't have to do that, but I think it's a good idea. Hopefully you guys can see this well. And you could get, I think they're called wing nuts that have the little, um, oh, through my nut. Okay. Um, they have the little um, wings on the side that make it easier, but to me, this is not difficult. So, there we go. And obviously, you can use a tool to tighten that if you want, but that's that. Uh-oh, that side doesn't look right. That might be the wrong one. Anyways, so I'm gonna have like I said, I'm going to have both sides that are detachable. I can take these completely off. I could slide my loaf right out. But the next one that I do, I'll have one that's screwed in, and then I'll have one that has the, the um, bolts and the nuts that I can take apart so that um, I only have one side that I, come, I can just pull the loaf right out. You also, I've seen other people that do like the... Um, the little hinge, you know, so it just like opens up like this. But to me, it's nice if it comes completely off. Personal taste, right? Um, so I, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to 
I'm going to measure my holes and I'm going to actually show you how I did because this was this was not easy to drill those big huge holes through there it was like several steps so I'm going to show you how I did it just because um, my this video might be kind of long but my thought is when I've watched other videos it just kind of shows you the end result and they do tell you kind of like the steps in between but they don't always show you how to actually get to that point so I'm gonna kind of do a more detailed video and it may be a little longer, but people can watch what they want and, and you know, fast forward through what they don't want to. So um, I just feel like that may be helpful to some people. So I'll bring you back in a minute, okay? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start attaching the base to the sides. I've got all the drill holes done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, I'm going to bring this through, yeah, see, it's just barely, because I don't really know, you know, I've never done this before, so I'm kind of just, you know, doing, trying to figure out what the best way to do this is. Um, and I didn't want to use any glue, which, you know, that would make it easier. Um, it would make it a lot easier, actually, but um, I don't want glue on my um, final project. So, kind of lining this up. And I may need to adjust, it may be slightly... Yeah, I may have, I may have gotten this slightly, it may be slightly off. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that first screw in. And um, from there, you know, it should be a little bit easier because we'll have everything kind of, it'll at least be like attached a little bit more sturdy because I basically just have to hold this in place. I should have got some clamps but um, I actually I did think about that and I kind of forgot. So let's go ahead and just see how this goes. Um, I'm going to do it real slowly. This really does do you know all the work for you. So I'm going to stop for a minute because this is kind of getting like off kilter. There we go. Perfect. All right. Not sure if I need my drill hole far enough in. I didn't make my drill holes quite far enough in. Dang it. And, you know, I'm not like a super strong woman, so holding this together is kind of hard. All right, let's try it one more time. So, well, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to re-drill these holes a little bit um, farther in because, well, and actually maybe I should go ahead and, this is not a good thing to do, but um, I'm going to go ahead and take this out because, shoot, I don't even know if I can. I may have to just um, manually try to get that all the way in. Um, this is, you know, this is a trial and error of the whole thing. All right, so I am going to go ahead in with my drill bit and. Um,
go ahead and drill these holes a tiny bit farther in so that I don't come across this issue with every single one of them. And I'm telling you, this could become a new addiction. I really like working with this drill. <laughs> it's pretty fun. I've never worked with power tools before. And it's pretty fun. You just have to be really careful. Oh, and by the way, um, wear protective eye gear just in case. Um, you just never know what may um, pop up and, you know, it, you could really get hurt. What I do is I just run this sander across there after I do that just to make sure because sometimes little splinters come up. This time there's not really any and make sure you get all the sawdust out of there. No, it's not sawdust I'm not because I'm not sawing. Drill dust I guess whatever you want to call it. All right so um, I'm not going to worry about that one for right now. I'm just going to go ahead on to my other ones and hope um, that this will work out better. Okay. And again, I'm going to go ahead and slowly drill this. Oops. Got it a little, a little bit not straight. Dang it. Um, So I'm going to hold it like this. Alright, so that one went in just fine. I'll do the rest of them. After you get those two in, you know, should be fairly easy at this point. As long as my holes are in the right place. Um, which... Boy, do I hope they are. Everything looks good so far. Doing 
yank it on it a little bit. Basically, I'm just going to go ahead and go through all this. You guys don't need to watch me do that. I'll bring you back when I'm to the next step, okay? Thank you. Well, look at this. Right when I'm making my molds, this one that I ordered from Etsy cam came. Just got here in the mail. So, I bought this on Etsy. <clears throat> It's a tall and skinny mold. Let me tell you uh, which Etsy store I bought this from. So it's tall and skinny mold. It is, the inside dimensions are 15 and a half by two and a half by four. And it's got a removable bottom. I bought it from Ozark Soap Molds, and I, it was a very reasonable price, I felt, $18, and my shipping, let me tell you what I paid for shipping, I think it was like $13 or something, $13.37 for shipping, so all together $31.37. And this is the mold. And what I really like about this mold, which um, I like that there's only like eight screws. Two here, two, two on each side. And then now I could never make this removable base. I don't know. I have absolutely no idea. You have to have some special tool to make these um, indentions. And that's why I bought this one. I, I, could, I can't make something like that myself, but this is awesome. Look how nice it is. Now let's check. It looks a little wider than two and a half to me. Nope, it's exactly two and a half. Two and a half, 15 and a half, by four inches exactly. So I really like this. I'm, I'm you know, looking forward to using it. Now, what kind of wood this is? Some kind of pressed some kind of pressed wood. This is not hard wood like what I bought. This is probably cheaper than what I used. Um, let me see if it says on here what kind of wood this is. Birch. Birch plywood. Three quarter inch birch plywood, which I'm not familiar with different woods. I can just see that there's like layers in here which means it's not straight up hardwood. Um, which, from what I know, this straight up like hardwood, and this is um, poplar, is very, very strong, durable, and um, like it'll last forever, I guess. But, um, but I'm, I'm excited to use this, and I felt like it was a really reasonable price, especially taking into account how much I've spent on what I've gotten to make my own, um, this is, a, I say, a good deal. So Ozark Soap Molds, uh, tall and skinny one, very nice. I'm excited that it came. So um, I've gotten my screws put in, and what I've realized is I really don't need as many as I put so I, I didn't put as many on this side because there's just no reason for it so basically I've got this put together and my only problem is oh no you know what well I'll be you know what exactly three and a half inches so I did a good job thank goodness I was a little worried so oh geez I don't think, there we go. Yeah, this is like super tight. Um, there's my sideboards. That's one, that's one that's not. Sideboards. And like I told you before, if I had this to do over again, I would not do the, um, I would just make one end stationary 
and only one end come out. Holy moly, I don't know if I can get this one in there. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. Jeez Louise, you guys. That's freaking hard as heck. Oh shit. Excuse me, excuse me. All right, so that's very tight. Oh my gosh, I don't even feel like I need to put anything in there. So there we go. That is the mold, and all I have to do is place my bolts, which, darn it, if I didn't put it in the wrong, yeah, put the wrong, okay. Oh my goodness gracious. I've got the wrong one in the wrong side. So let's see. Here we go. This is this is the correct one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to get this in place and then I'll bring you guys back. That looks hard. Hey everybody. I'm back. I've got the, um, I've got this side attached. And then this side I'm going to make stationary. I'm just going to make it permanent. So I've drilled my holes and even though um, this is going to be a little weird because um, I'm not even sure if it's actually going to work because I've already got these holes drilled in here, but I'm going to try it and see if it'll work. So I'm going to make sure, yeah, basically. see better this when I do it on this side. And normally obviously I wouldn't have this big of holes already drilled in here. I would just drill the um, pilot holes. But um, change of plans warranted it being like that. Still very, let's see, there we go. Real nice and sturdy. There we go. So there it is. That is my first soap mold. 
and um, obviously I'll line it always with freezer paper and then I'm going to just show you how easily I can open up this end here to bring the soap out. There you go. Slide it out right there. Good to go. So um, I'm going to, when I upload this video, I will, um, I'll put all of my measurements and materials that I used. So if you want to do it, um, or if you want to, you know, try to make one yourself, you can do that. Um, I'll put, you know, obviously I used, uh, like I said, the poplar wood. Um, these are called like hex, hex bolts or something like that. And um, the little, the little washers and then the little nuts to go on the end. And that's pretty much it. I used um, a drill and I used a variety of the drill bits for different reasons. I'll put the sizes of those on there also. And um, I used number eight two inch wood screws. And there it is. It's awesome. I'm so excited that I actually, that I did it. Now, um, I'm hoping to um, make another, well, I'm going to make another one. I've got my, my second one here, but I'm hoping to make a tall and skinny at another time. And, um, if I do that, I'll, I'll definitely, um, I'll make a video and I'll show you guys what I did. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it helped. I hope, um, maybe some of you will be inspired to make some of your own or you can always buy one like the one I showed you <laughs> from Etsy. There, uh, you know, kind of depends on what you want to do. And if I ever did this again, here's one little tip. If I ever did this again, I would definitely buy the 12 foot boards and I would make several at a time to make the cost of each mold cheaper because basically just the materials for this stuff I basically spent about $19 each which is still a good deal um, or maybe it's 18 yeah yeah about $18 each um, $18.50 to be exact but anyways um, you know, basically I bought that other mold for that, but this wood is very different than the wood that that, that mold that I'm, I've got over there is made with. This poplar is more expensive, so that's one of the reasons why. Um, but you know, it kind of just depends on what you want to do. If I would have bought the larger size boards and made um, several at a time, which is what I wanted to do, but there was a couple little drawbacks. But I think there's ways that you could get around that. There is a two and a half inch wide board that I could have used for the base and then used this five and a half inch um, for like, pretend this is the two and a half inch board. You could do a tall and skinny with the five and a half inch board. And then basically you've got like four and three quarters, which is a little taller than a tall and skinny, but that's okay. I mean, a lot of the time you don't go fill your mold all the way to the top. So if I make a tall and skinny, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll use the two and a half inch wide with the five and a half inch on both sides which I'll like better anyways because I don't love the fact that the screws are on the bottom because if it's on my um, counter, it's I feel like it's gonna scrape. So I'm always gonna wanna have something underneath this. So I would actually prefer to have the screws on the sides. Um, that way you don't have that scratching and scraping. So those are a couple little tips that I would say um, maybe would help if, if you guys make one um, and avoid some of the things that I did that I would do differently. Uh, anyways, so subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll get see you guys soon next time I make some soap in one of these molds. Bye-bye.